While a lot of accessories support HomeKit, a lot of other big names in the smart home business don't, such as Nest. However, with a piece of software called HomeBridge, you are able to connect previously incompatible accessories with HomeKit. In today's tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to set up HomeBridge on a Raspberry Pi. For this project, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. I personally recommend a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, as that's what I'm going to be using. But technically, any Raspberry Pi that has internet capability should work. Also, when following this tutorial, be sure to refer to the description down below, as I've put all the links and commands that you'll need to set up HomeBridge there. Okay, to start things off, the first thing we're going to want to do is log into a Raspberry Pi. So to do that, open up Terminal on your Mac, and then type in ssh pi at, and then your Raspberry Pi's IP address. Once you hit that, type in your password for your Raspberry Pi. Once you're logged in, the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that everything's up to date before we install HomeBridge. So go ahead and type in sudo apt-get update. You can also copy and paste the command from the HomeBridge GitHub page. Once you have that entered in, hit the return key and it'll start updating. The command is here if you want to copy and paste it. Now this is going to take a little while, so I'll speed it up for you and then I'll come back once it's done. With that being done, it's time to enter in the next command. So to do that, Type in the same command as you did last time, but replace the word update with the word upgrade. Again, you can also just copy and paste the command from the GitHub homebridge page as I did. And you'll see it'll start to run. Now if you get asked for confirmation wanting to continue the install, simply type in a capital Y and then hit return. And you'll see it'll continue the installation as normal. Again, I'm going to speed this up for you so you don't have to wait as long as I do. Now that our Raspberry Pi is all up to date, the next step is to install Node.js, which is a package manager that Homebridge uses. So to install that, once again, go to the Homebridge GitHub page, and it varies the installation depending on which Raspberry Pi you have, but most Raspberry Pis have a ARM v7 chip. And so if your Raspberry Pi does, there's only two simple commands that you need to enter to install it. The first command is found here. So copy and paste this command on the first line, and then paste it into your Raspberry Pi, and then run it. Again, this will take some time, so I'll speed it up for you. Now you'll see here that I got an error. Now if you get an error, no worries. Just paste and run the command again, and keep on doing that until the installation works as intended. There we go. This time it worked. Now the next step is to enter in the second command to install Node.js. So go ahead and copy and paste this command on the second line, sudo apt-get install-y node.js, and then paste it and run it. That's it. Node.js is now installed. Now as I mentioned, these two steps are for Raspberry Pis with an ARM v7 chip. If your Raspberry Pi doesn't have one or you don't know, Type in this command here, uname-a, and then paste it into your Raspberry Pi. You'll notice here that mine says ARMv7, so this lets me know that I do have an ARMv7 chip. But if your Raspberry Pi doesn't have one, look on the Homebridge GitHub page for instructions for your specific Raspberry Pi model. Once you have Node.js installed, it's time to go ahead and install some more dependencies. So to do that, copy and paste this command found on the Homebridge GitHub page and let it run. Now that that's downloaded, we now have all the dependencies that Homebridge requires in order to run properly. So now it's time to install Homebridge itself. So to find that command, click on the README link under Proceed as Usual. This will take us to the main Homebridge GitHub page. Now scroll until you are under the tab Installation, and then you'll find this command here to install Homebridge. So go ahead and copy and paste this command found here, and then run it on your Raspberry Pi to start installing Homebridge itself.
Once that's done, you should have everything downloaded in order to run Homebridge. So to test to make sure that everything's working properly, type in Homebridge on your Raspberry Pi, followed by the return key. Now if you see a warning like this pop up, don't worry. This is normal behavior for Homebridge. And on the GitHub webpage, the developer of Homebridge has stated that this is normal behavior and that unfortunately require a lot of effort to get rid of this warning and it just isn't worth it. So you can just ignore these warnings that it gives you. But what you should focus on is this yellow text here. No plugins found. And don't worry, this is also normal too because we haven't installed any plugins. So the next step is to install some plugins for ourselves. On the Homebridge GitHub webpage, you'll find a section called Installing Plugins. Go ahead and click on the Searching for a Keyword Homebridge Plugin link. This will take us to npmjs.com, where we can download plugins for Homebridge. You'll see that by clicking on that link, it automatically fills in the Homebridge Plugin search term that we need to find. So we can search for any plugin that we'd like that exists. So I'm going to search Nest. Hit return, and you'll see that there are a few Nest plugins. So I want to click on the main one, Homebridge Nest. And you'll see here that it gives us the command that we need to run to install the Nest plugin for Homebridge. That command is npm install g homebridge nest. But also if you scroll down, it gives us information on how to configure and use this plugin. Now the Nest is a little bit more complicated than some other plugins. It involves setting up a Nest API, which is done on Nest's official website. And then you need to copy some information from that API and put it into your config file. So copy and paste the install plugin from the website and paste it into terminal. Then hit return and it'll start downloading. Now if you get an error saying that it couldn't get right access or permission denied, type in sudo and then the command and then hit return and then it'll have all the proper permissions needed to install the plugin. There we go. Now that we have everything downloaded, it's time to edit our config file to get everything up and running. To start working on our config file, the first thing we're going to do is open the config sample JSON file from the Homebridge GitHub page. So go ahead and click on that link and you'll be presented with this little block of code. Now we're going to copy and paste this into a text editor, but don't use text edit that's built into Mac. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well with JSON files. So I recommend the text editor Atom. I'll have a link in the description down below for you to download. So open that up, and then once you have that open, copy and paste the sample code into a new document. Now that we've done that, we're going to be using this as a base for making our own config file. You'll notice on the top of the config file that there's name and then Homebridge. Now Homebridge is going to be the name of the hub that appears in the Home app. However, if you want to change it so it's something other than Homebridge, you can. Underneath that, you'll see pin. Now this is going to be a code that you can enter to add the hub to the home app. Now if you'd like, you can customize this code as well. Just make sure that there's the same amount, eight digits, and make sure that they're all numbers as well. Under pin, you'll see description. This is just a description of your config file. If you like, you can edit it, do something else, or you can just delete the line altogether. One of the last steps to editing our config file is adding the plugins that we've downloaded. So to do that, go back to npmjs.com and go to the webpage where you've downloaded the plugin. At the bottom of the Nest plugin, you'll see a configuration sample, and you probably will see this in a lot of other plugins too. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this sample code and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it into my configuration file. Now, as I mentioned, the setup for each plugin is different depending on the plugin. And so for the Nest plugin, you need to create a cloud API with Nest and then set up a client ID and then the password and code. So I'm not going to do that here, but the instructions are on the Homebridge Nest plugin page. So once you do that, you can enter in the information and then you can add it into your config file for it to start working. 
One of the last things you're going to want to do before you save and upload your config file is make sure that everything's formatted correctly and that's valid. So to check that, go to jasonlint.com. I'll have the link in the description down below and copy and paste your config file into the website. Now to see if it's valid or not, hit the validate JSON button. You'll see in my case that it brings up an error on line eight. And the reason for that being is that I didn't add a comma at the end. So once I do that, once I add a comma, and then I hit validate JSON again, you'll see that it says valid JSON. And once you see that, then that's when your JSON's okay and ready to save. When you're saving, make sure you name the file config.json, J-S-O-N. And make sure to save it at a location that's easy to access, as we're going to be uploading this file to our Raspberry Pi. To upload your config file, you're going to need to access the file system on your Raspberry Pi. To do that, I'm going to use an app called Fetch. However, you can use any app that you like. So to do that, navigate to the home folder on your Raspberry Pi and click on .homebridge and then just simply drag and drop the config file until it's done uploading. That's it. Now we can type in homebridge again in terminal to launch homebridge. And if everything works correctly, it should be up and running. You'll notice in the log it says initiating Nest Platform, so that's good. And it's not giving us any errors about the formatting of our config file, so that's another good sign. There we go. There's no errors, so it seems like everything's working fine. So let's head over onto our iOS device to complete the setup. Now that you're on your iOS device, go to the Apple Home app, and click on the plus in the top right corner, then click on Add Accessory. There's two ways to add the home bridge, and first way is by clicking on don't have a code or can't scan. You can click on home bridge and then add anyway, and this will allow you to manually enter in the pin that you set up in the config file. But a much easier way is just by scanning it using the camera, scanning the code that home bridge gives you in terminal. You'll see that home bridge is now added, and it'll let you rename the hub if you'd like. I'm going to leave it as is, but if you like, you can change it. You'll also see too, and now I see the smoke sensor for my Nest Protect, as well as a separate CO2 sensor and my Nest Thermostat. And by hitting Done, all these accessories are now added to my home app. You can see that it behaves very much like a stock HomeKit accessory, allowing you to customize things such as the name and control the temperature. If you're interested in having Homebridge start immediately upon the boot of the Raspberry Pi, you should check out timleland.com. Here he has a helpful tutorial of commands that you can copy and paste in order to do just that. I'll have a link in the description down below if you're interested. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it assisted you in setting up Homebridge on your Raspberry Pi. If you need any further help, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section down below. Also, if you aren't already, be sure that you're subscribed to the channel, as we put out lots of great quality reviews and tutorials. Pretty soon we're going to be having an awesome tutorial on using Homebridge to create super cheap HomeKit smart outlets. So make sure you're subscribed so you're alerted when that comes out. I'm Logan for iOS Hacker, and that's all for today. I'll see you in the next video.